Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be playing Underwater Parliament on Impossible. I'm all caught up with the, the old videos, so that means I did film this video like yesterday instead of last year. Yes, I have learned my lesson. I'm not going to film a million videos and hope I'll have time to do a commentary. In the video, I didn't want to go overboard with buying too much stuff, like 8 tech terrors. Actually, I don't know how many. I think I have enough for 8. So I pretty much just brought my casual loadout, and at the end of the game, I did end up having like 100k money, and I just never spent it. Probably because I don't really need that. All I did was give Finn a 40 sword, and that's about it. I didn't want to add too much trinkets, so I kind of just removed some. I did use my new and improved farming strat. I wouldn't say it's new, because I have been using it for quite a while. But technically, because the last few videos were filmed a year ago, it kind of is new. Also, I wonder if you notice at the start of the game, how I had... How let's just say, my levels went up by 6 levels, and I went from having around 60k coins to 90,000. And I went from a few hundred gems to a few thousand gems, and a few thousand shards to 80,000 shards. I haven't been spending shards much, probably because I'm getting close to having all the epic trinkets I've ever wanted. And that's just how- that's just to put into perspective how long it was since I filmed my last Blooms video. Oh yeah, speaking of my new and improved farming strat, the only stuff that really changed was my characters have money generating trinkets like the universal coin and I use Princess Bubblegum's royal degree which, you know, it's like free money. Kinda it's because it's a really cheap ability and you have 75 rounds for impossible. I usually get it around round 20. Got a bit late this time but it's still fine. And that's like a lot of rounds to just generate money. Also, I remembered a tip that I should probably say. Flame Princess's elemental ability is pretty short, so you can get near full uptime with Cobra. I'm not sure if I have a baby tooth on Princess, I mean Flame Princess. So maybe you could get two Cobras. I know Cobra stack, which is amazing. I don't know how much they stack up to, because I don't bring that many Cobras. I think I usually have three to four, maybe. I could bring 8, just to test one day, but I don't know why I would do that. Also, there is Jake's upgrade that also does what Monkey Shin from Cobra Zoo, and it makes ability shorter. I'm not sure about that, probably because I don't upgrade Jake that much. I don't upgrade a lot some characters that much, actually. They're just supporting characters, like Jake, Finn... Finn is kind of in the middle. Sometimes I upgrade Finn and sometimes I don't. I know I don't upgrade Jake often, and I definitely don't upgrade Merceline. Because the only reason I even have Merceline is just to discount the abilities. But that does save a lot of money. Then probably if I was doing Martian games, I wouldn't use Merceline because... I can probably still buy all the abilities and all that stuff, and have money to spare in the end. And I will be able to get myself another attacking character, which would be nice. Also, I was thinking about music at 2 times the speed, because usually, in my video editor, I try to play the level itself at 2 times the speed, so that it goes a bit faster for you guys. Although the music gets kind of squished, so I decided to just um, stretch that out and then make it sound normal. But for sometimes music at the old times of speed, it does sound better than the original, probably because we listen to the original a lot. So then it gives a different taste to it. Also, this true sun god is so cheap because when you have Merceline and I mean Merceline's Humbo and Soul Stone, it costs 18,000. It costs like 40k-ish with the upgrades before it. Which I still think is quite cheap. Anyways, I was thinking about that when I was playing the levels, and I wondered 
if it was still the most expensive upgrade in the game. However, it turns out that there's one expensive upgrade that I probably only use once, probably because it's not that good, and it's on a common ally. So with discounts, that thing actually costs more than the Sun God. Have you guessed what character it is, or I mean, what ally it is, or what upgrade it is? Yeah, it's Orgalord from Gunter, and it costs 30k. I think it's like around 26k with discounts from the Super Monkey. And since you can't put care trinkets on it and it's not an ability, you can't really discount it more. I'm not sure about all the ally discounts, but maybe. It's still gonna cost more than Sun God, I'm pretty sure. And is it better than the Sun God? Not by a long shot. I'd pick Tech Terrors over the Orgalord, because the Orgalord can't pop camo, and it doesn't do that much damage. I'm not sure if Tech Terrors do more damage, but for the price, Tech Terrors are definitely better, especially since Tech Terrors have way more range. So even if Orgalord did do more damage, Tech Terrors would probably still technically do more damage in the long run because of their massive range. If Orgalord had camo, then I would use it. It would be awesome. You know, that's kind of what I wish for. Imagine a $30,000 upgrade that doesn't even pop camo. Well, the Super Monkey, but, you know, trinkets. Also, I was filming this level on kind of a time crunch, because I had to re-roll quests in 45 minutes after this, and then I had a balloon beacon in 30 minutes after this. Well, a balloon beacon was going to expire after 30 minutes. So what, ended up, and what that meant was, usually impalpable levels take like 15 minutes, so that means I have to play this, then I have to play the Gloom Beacon, and then I have to reroll my quests. I have to play a second Gloom Beacon after that. But unfortunately, when I was rerolling the quests, I only had like 2 minutes, so I was kind of just thinking. And I accidentally rerolled the diamond chest for, yes, you, you guessed it, bronze. And it was just a straight, straight line of bronze, and I got kind of sad. It was such a big fail. But then after that, it was pretty chill for the rest of the night, and I was just casually doing quests. Nowadays, I just pick whichever quests are easiest to complete for me, because the quests actually give a lot of good stuff, like gems, shards, and wish. Actually, shards and wish orbs. You don't really need that. They also give some powers, which is nice. So I'm not sure if they give powers. They give the stuff that a diamond chest would give, so maybe. But yeah, I get around 5 quests each day, and it's quite nice. I don't usually get diamond chests often, but just getting gold and silver sometimes, it's still good. Now I just pick quests for which one's the easiest compared to the rewards. So if the rewards are really hard to do, I probably wouldn't pick that quest, even if it's a diamond chest, because I want to finish it by the next day. Anyways, we beat- wait, did I call this Underwater Parliament? Okay, we beat Fish Parliament. Anyways, I'll leave this episode off right here. See you guys next time.